God is there. That's the end of the verse. Look what it says. And no temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted above what you are able. But look at this. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. There's a huge truth in this verse that we need to stop and lay a hold of. You know what it is? God is there all the time. God is always there. It, it's not us facing off with the devil trying to devour us. It's God with us expectantly looking at us saying, are you going to ask for my help? Are you going to ask for my intervention? Are you going to follow the doorway of escape I've made for you? He's looking right at us. In every temptation, we're looking at the temptation and God is looking right at us, waiting for us to just turn and look and say, you're faithful. What's the way out of this? The longer we meditate on this verse, the bigger the shadow looming over it becomes. That shadow is none other than the shadow of the one who made the promise. In order to do everything this verse says, God has to actually manage his promise on sight. He is not distant. He is never closer than when we're tempted. It is God who towers over this passage. God is there all the time. And every trial we face has a clearly marked exit, and God himself is standing ready to usher us out of danger. The lesson this morning is God is always there. Have, have you allowed that truth to sink in? We all know what our besetting sins are, and besetting sins are preceded with besetting temptations, and besetting temptations are preceded by trials. And the trial is, do I like the way God made me? Do I like how things are going in life? Do I like what is going on? Or do I think I can run it better than God? And I'm tried with that, that doubting whether God is really in touch with my life, doubting whether he's good, doubting whether his plan is right, and doubting whether he even has the authority to tell me. And that's the trial. And Satan says... God's not good. He's withholding from you. Go for it. And God, on sight, omnipresently, goes through life next to us, awaiting us, crying out to him. Now, just before we go, yep, I have enough minutes. I want to read this. Have you allowed that truth to sink into your soul and become part of your operating system? God has told us he's faithful, and whenever we think we're alone, we're not alone. We never face the adversary, the prowling lion called the devil alone. God has already measured and limited the attack he'll allow the world and the flesh and the devil to make upon us. He has already provided an escape route if we'll only look for it and take it. And if we were alone and facing temptation, we would be hopelessly defeated. But God knows that. So he is always there all the time, all the way, every time, and has the best way marked out for us. That's our faithful God. Now this is what I want to read. Warren Wearsby, pastor down at Moody Memorial for many years and the writer of many books, told a story when he was a pastor. He said this dad called him and said that that he'd been picked on by two or three bullies who had punched him, pushed him over on his bike, and generally made his life miserable, and they told the little boy that the next morning they were going to wait for him on the way to school, ambush him, and get him. And so the little guy and his broken, damaged bike and his scraped up nest came home, and that evening his dad heard the story, and so he worked with him. He showed him a few self-defense techniques. He passed off a a few helpful techniques for escape. He even gave him a few tips on how to win over the bullies as friends and went through a long night. The next morning, the lad and the dad prayed together, but the boy knew the inevitable was sure to happen. But reassuringly, his father embraced him and gave him a firm handshake, smiled at him confidently and said, Son, you can do it. You're going to make it fine to school don't worry. Choking back 
the tears, the boy got on his bike and began the long, lonely, fearsome ride to school. But what he didn't know was that at every block he rode, he was constantly under the watchful eye of his dad, who was driving his car at a safe distance from his son, out of his sight, but ever ready to speed up and to completely assist when the scene became too threatening. The boy thought through the whole journey he was alone, but he never was. His father was there all the time. Now, Wearsby is a great writer, but what he's reminding us is what the Lord's Prayer says. Our Father, who is in heaven, said, you are never alone. And I am going through life, and I will never lead you into temptation. I will always lead you out of it. You have to choose whether you're going to turn and look at your father or if you're going to stay looking at your temptation and doubting that your father is good and wise and powerful and whether or not he has the authority to tell you not to do that. That's the choice of life. And we're supposed to pray for each other that we'll look for our father. He's always there.